Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Good job. A plus. You turned your clocks ahead. You made it to worship, and I did too. So we're good. We're good. It was a beautiful sunrise, which I don't usually see, so it was really, I like sunsets. I see a lot of them. It was really pretty today, though, lovely morning that we have out to be worshiping our great God. And in Dwight, Illinois, we welcome our online viewers. We welcome our in-person folks. Uh, Just a few announcements. First, I just want to say thank you. I had a really nice birthday yesterday, a birthday week birthday month. I I just like to celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. And I hope all of you who have birthdays are as blessed as I am. I really um, had a lot of wonderful blessings in my life, and I praise God for them. So, and thank you for cards and other expressions of your love. I had told myself, you know, it's pandemic. You moved. These people don't know you. Don't think you're going to get much. Just buck up. You're just going to have to deal with it. You're, you've left the other people, so get over it. Your family, you know them. So, But my husband, he came through 90, 100% as he always does. And uh, But I had so many blessings, uh, good greetings from so many different folks. And it's just a blessing. It's a blessing to have people who are willing to do that. So if you, you know, be sure and do that to your friends and, and family just to wish them a text makes a big difference to somebody's life or a phone call. So do that if you know they're having a birthday. And don't worry if you're late, right? I don't, I'm not going to mind hearing things this next week. Don't you worry. And I know other people are that way too. So I just want to encourage you that as we're talking about giving today, you know, give your love. Be generous in your love and appreciation of others. You can still buy Easter flowers and got us an extension. So if, uh, if you'd like to make sure we have plenty of beautiful Easter flowers, the sign-up sheet's out there in the foyer, or you can call the office, and she'll be sure and get you signed up for that. So if you would like uh, to get some Easter flowers, lilies, or other flowers, please do that uh, this week. And um, Easter candy. We are going to be doing our Easter egg hunt and I did find prepackaged eggs at Meyer in Bloomington, for anybody who might want to know that. And so they're out there. I was going to bring them up here. I forgot. So they're out there in the foyer if you want to look at them. And the ones I got had stickers and candy. Who knows what's inside? I'm not going to open them. So <laughs> yeah, so that's an option for you if you're looking to do that. All right. I think that's all the announcements. Birthdays. Here's some more people having birthdays. Happy birthday to everybody. Looks like bills are... Got a St. Patrick's Day birthday coming up. So happy birthday and Mary Picarney's birthdays this week. And Kodaks are having an anniversary. So happy anniversary and birthdays to everyone. Friends, God is good. And all the time, let's worship and praise our great God as we listen to this beautiful prelude.
you, Ellie. Let's join together in our call to worship. Give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his holy name. My strength and my song, the Lord is my salvation. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known throughout all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, for great is the Holy One of Israel among us. Amen. Let's stand together and sing our opening praise, an old favorite, How Great Thou Art. So I give Mary a little more love and sing happy birthday to her, okay? Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mary. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, good job. Good job, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the world thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great. Thou art. When through the woods and forest glades I wander and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees, when I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing, sent him to die i scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. Amen. You may be seated. Let's pray together. 
Merciful God, you have given us life and have sustained us through all times and in all places. We thank you for bringing us to this place of worship. Inspire us to speak truthfully and listen attentively. Through our time together, may we become channels of your love and mercy, reaching out to a hurting world in generosity, for you have given your all, even your son to us, Jesus. In his name we pray, amen. All right, well, children and youth, it's your time today. Are you awake? Are you with me? Are you perky? Do you like to get things like I do, like presents? No? You don't want any presents or anything? Yeah, 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 you like presents. Do you like to give things? Do you all like to give things? I do, some, I do like to give things. It's hard sometimes because you want to do not give nice things, but when, when you do it and they like it, then yeah, I like to give things. So presents are fun, aren't they? Well, today we're talking about giving and receiving. Let's share this Bible verse together. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For the measure you use, it will be measured to you. How's that sound? Pretty good? I'm going to show that with this. Look at this. I got this big bowl of brown sugar here. Yeah, I know. Tasty. Would you like a little sample? <laughs> and I'm going to measure some into these bags. And I'm going to use the same measuring cup. And that when we get done, I want you to tell me which has more in it. Okay? All right. So the first one, I'm just going to scoop some in here. Mm, it smells really good. I'm just going to put it right in here. All right, so we have this bag. We'll hope it doesn't fall over. What? Huh? Huh? I can't hear you. Oh, you're looking. Oh, I see. <laughs> I'm so glad that I made you repeat that five times. And now the next one I'm going to press down in this cup and measure it, and we'll see how we got, how much we can get pressed down. Do you think that makes a difference? It, have you cooked before? With your mom? Good. Not with your dad? <laughs> no, dad's shaking his head no. All right. Now, which is different? How much has more? This is the, the pressed down one. So it's good to get things that are pressed down and generously given, isn't it? Because you really see the difference. That's a big difference, isn't it? That's a lot. Yeah, it's good to, to have things, when we give generously, then the Bible tells us we receive generously. Now, we don't need to give to receive, but that's just a bonus. That's a blessing of giving, is how much we receive. So, we need to think about how we can be generous in giving to others. So, how could you give to people right now? What's a, what, go ahead, Carter. That's a great idea. If you have some toys that you don't play with anymore, you could donate them. And who could you give them to? Kids that don't have any money. Right. And where's the place that we send good things like that to? <laughs> no, no, that's a good guess. With your mom being in medicine, that's a good guess. We have a big garage back in our... Have you ever taken a box of stuff to our big garage? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good place to give and send it down to Kentucky because people are glad to get... You, when they open all those boxes that we put in our big garage, they are like having presents. And we miss out on that, but it'd be fun to see them. But even when we sent all those medical supplies, they were like, bonus! It was like a Christmas day. So giving is such a joyful thing to do. It fills our hearts with joy. But even more, God says, you give and I'm going to give even more to you. Let's pray together. Repeat after me. Dear Lord, we're so thankful for all you give us. We're especially thankful for our family and friends. And the precious gift of your son. But we have much more than that. Help us to be generous in giving of our material possessions because you, 
because we show your love. In the name of your love, we pray. Jesus. Amen. Good job, everyone. Let's sing our next song of praise. Oh, Jesus, I have promised. profess our faith together this morning. We're going to share the Apostles' Creed. Let's say this together in unison. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's stand and sing the Gloria. Glory Patre. Glory be to the Father. Our scripture lesson today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6. We're going to look at verses 35 through 38. So that'll give you four verses on your five out of today. So you'll get some verses in today. And I hope you're going to continue reading your five verses. But let's share God's word for us. This is part of the Sermon on the Mount. But we're looking at Luke's version. Jesus is speaking. Love your enemies, do good to them, lend without expecting them to be repaid. Then your reward from heaven will be very great, and you will truly be acting as children of the Most High, for he is kind to those who are unthankful and wicked. You must be compassionate, just as your Father is compassionate. Do not judge others, and you will not be judged. 
Do not condemn others, or it will all come back against you. Forgive others, and you will be forgiven. Give, and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Two friends were talking about giving, and one was they were debating on how generous they were with each other, or not to each other, but just in general, how generous they were. And one said to the other, he said, well, now, if you had two cats, would you be willing to give one away? Oh, yes, he said, I could give two cats or two dogs even. Of course I would. Oh, now, what about if you had two tractors? Would you be willing to give two, one of the tractors away? Yes, I would give a tractor away. Sure, of course. Would you give a house if you have two houses? Yes, I will give a house away. Hmm, that's pretty generous. What about cows? Will you give a cow away if you have two cows? Will you give one away? No, no, I can't do that. Well, you just said you would give a house, a tractor, even a dog away, but you won't give a cow? Why not? I have two cows. <laughs> You'll get it in a minute. <laughs> it's painful when you do. <laughs> it's all good and fine to talk about giving, but action is a whole nother issue, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's, it's, it's hard to give sometimes. But when you begin giving, I think you find that it becomes easier and easier as you go along. We call our giving in the church an offering or tithing. That's church language for people who aren't familiar with it. They might, what are you talking about? Now, it's been a year, a year. Can you imagine since we've collected an offering here in church? Now, we collect offerings. We have our offering containers in the back, or you can use online giving, or you can mail your offering into the church, and many of you have continued to do that faithfully. Good job. But it's hard to imagine how much our lives as a church family has changed, that we haven't sung the doxology for a year, right? I think we'll start singing that again, and just get. we won't be passing plates again, maybe ever. A lot of churches have decided they're just going to keep doing the way they've done this way. But I think we've been remiss in not having a time of offering where we can dedicate what we give to the Lord and take a time to give thanks and, and be mindful of what we do give to the Lord. We're called to give all sorts of different things to the Lord. I was visiting a church once on a vacation Sunday, and it was in Peoria, and I don't remember why I took a vacation Sunday, but my husband chose not to, but, you know, you're married, so if you've ever been in a relationship, you know, you just let those things go. Who knows? But I remember I was downtown in this church in Peoria, and it was um, a non-denominational church, and so they had a very mixed population, and um, when they got ready to take the offering, the person who was the pastor who was doing that part of the service stood up and said, it's time for the offering. And they started applauding. They started cheering. I was shocked. You know, I'm a Methodist. <laughs> I, you, getting people to applaud and cheer in a Methodist church, when there's some really good music, you might pull it out of them. But for the offering, these people were happy to have the privilege to give to the Lord. And that's how they looked at it. So I want you to think about if you would be applauding for time for offering, it's your time to give. And when I looked around that, um, that sanctuary, I saw these different people and, and being a minister just right across the river, I had seen some of these people come ask for help even. So I knew these, some of these people were really struggling. And I, it hit me that maybe they were, some of them were thankful that they'd gotten to a point that they could give something to the Lord. And then others like me were thankful that they had plenty to give to the Lord, and it really was more of a willful issue instead of a financial issue. And so just think about you clapping your hands and giving praise to God when it's time to give the offering. I, I was, it was a, it's a challenge for me. 
Giving is a privilege. We should think of it as that way. We're privileged to have things to give. We're privileged to have the heart to give. That's a privilege. And we're also privileged that God, who owns everything and who gives us everything, is willing to take back a little bit of what we're willing to give him. Right? Did you ever think about that? I mean, God, it's already God's. We belong to God. All of this belongs to God. All of our finances belong to God. And yet, it pleases him when we give him back some that's his own. Isn't that kind of funny? It's like if, if you're out to eat with a little kid and, and you know, you bought a happy meal and they're, you know, you got your own french fry or maybe you got a salad and they have their french fries and the little child says, hey, have some french fries. Doesn't that make you feel really good? But you already paid for all that. You know, basically they're yours. And yet that their willingness to give to you touches your heart. And somehow God looks at us in that loving way. And I find that amazing. That, that it's such a wonderful thing that God receives our gifts. Now, the other thing I think about gifts is about the effort of the giver. Right? If, if you know that you saw those... Um, package of chocolate candies at Casey's in the aisle right by the checkout that arrived on your desk from your husband who forgot your birthday or anniversary, you might be like, really? <laughs> right? <laughs> You're like, but, you know, something is better than nothing. We all forget. But, it, you know, like, I arrived home, and, and my husband had some really nice things for me, and I knew that was an effort for him because I know how busy he is. I know his schedule, and I know how, and, effort, and so that made the gifts even better. It was not, that he had been so thoughtful to do that. And so our effort in giving sometimes improves the gift, and I think that's true for God. If we're willing to make a sacrifice to give, then I think God is pleased even more. But he's thankful for whatever gifts we give. And so we need to just be reminding ourselves that offering is a privilege to God. But giving our best to God is important because God gave to us first. God gave us the best gift of all. What has God given us? Jesus. That's the very best gift any of us can get. God was willing to give his son for us. That's how much he loves us. That he not only gives us life, but he gave his son as a sacrifice for us to take care of our sins so we don't have to worry about anything. And knowing Jesus and living in God's love, that's a privilege that I hope you have. And if you don't have it, I want to talk to you about that. Give me a call. Look me up. I want to talk to you about the privilege of knowing Jesus. I'm looking at the camera right now because I kind of think if you got up on Time Change Sunday, you might kind of know who Jesus is. That's just an assumption. So if you don't, I just want to talk to you too. But that's kind of my assumption that you, you love God a little bit or you wouldn't have done that. So good job for that. But for those who don't, you know, our message goes out all over the place. You never know who's going to be listening to us. And so I, and that's true when you're out and about though, Right. You never know who's going to be listening to you. But God has given us the greatest gift ever. And we have the greatest gift. As United Methodists, we believe not only has God given us Jesus, but United Methodists, we teach the Holy Spirit is already working in us to bring us to faith. That the Holy Spirit has been given out into the world, and the Holy Spirit works on people to receive Jesus. That we wouldn't understand who Jesus was if we didn't have the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we wouldn't be able to grow in our faith if we didn't have the gift of the Holy Spirit. So God has not only given us Jesus, but he pours out his Holy Spirit upon us to, to bless us and to help us grow in our faith. And if it wasn't for these great gifts from God, where would we be? You know, where would we be? But we have them. And so we are invited to live differently than we have before. Remember, we're in our Lenten challenge of five. You know, Jesus prayed a lot. That was the thing he did the most. More than healings, more than teachings, Jesus prayed. And so the, our hands are just our reminder for us to pray at least five times a day. Did you pray this morning? Did you say, I did, because, and that's unusual for me sometimes when I wake up, but I said, oh, thank you, Lord, I woke up on time. <laughs> 
this is my most stressful Sunday as a pastor to make sure I get to church on time. But I did, and I was so thankful. And actually, I was like, well, I'm not too asleep. That's pretty good. No, we have many things to thank God for. And then I thanked him for the beautiful sunrise and all that. And then breakfast. If we've had breakfast, we can thank him for our food. You know, that's our three things. First thing, when you wake up and invite God to use you somehow today, use you, and he will. That's the power of his Holy Spirit. You may not be trained as a pastor, and, 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 and statistics show. How do most people come to faith? Do they come to faith because of a pastor's sermon? No, they come to faith because of you. They come to church especially because you, you invited them. Pastors can invite people, that's their job. But when you invite people to come to church, they come because you invited them. So you have power to do things. So ask God to use you. And then your prayers for your meals. And then tonight, thank God for the day. Ask God to forgive you what you didn't do so great, you know. Maybe you were praying for a line I win this afternoon, and maybe they will win. And then maybe you call your friend up who's not a line I fan and say, see, I told you. You might need to repent of that later. <laughs> right? That's how sports work. So remember to do your five prayers and your five gratitude things. We're grateful for this. We're grateful for that. If you write it down, you might find you're happier. That's our five. And then five scripture verses. You already read four. <laughs> so one more. You just got to find one more and you'll make it for the day. But hopefully you're doing more than that and you're reading the Gospel of Mark and you're moving through the story of Jesus' last uh, few days. And it's powerful. And then service. Last week we talked about service and we showed all our different service activities. Just a, Not all of them. We just showed a few of them. We didn't show the... People who go to the, uh, the nursing homes and sing. I've forgotten the name of the group, though. Ladies of Faith. Our Ladies of Faith singing. We didn't, I know there was something else. Oh, Habitat for Humanity. I didn't put a plug in for that. There's many different things we do in service. Um, and Jesus models servanthood. The, we'll talk about that on Monday, Thursday again. But Jesus modeled servanthood throughout his life. But the big way was on the last day of his life, he washed the disciples' feet, which is the most lowest job a servant has in a, ser in a household. And he did that. Showing us that no job is too low for us to consider doing. It's a privilege to do all of them in Jesus' name. And giving our toys and packaging them up is, a, is this way we serve. It's a way we give. And, and another way we serve is to listen to people as they share to us. Or another way we serve, which is a hard one for me sometimes, is willing to be interrupted. Are you? Yeah, I heard someone laughing. <laughs> How many of you love to be interrupted when you're in the middle of a project? No. But that's, that's a way we can serve is willing for God's interruptions and to see how can I help someone while I'm being interrupted. And it's also a way we grow in generosity, which is what we're talking about today. We're made to be generous. That's a gift God gives us, to be generous. And how generous we are shapes our hearts and lives. It changes who we are as people, and not just about money. Generosity is about lots of different things, about our time, about our love. And about our, our financial gifts. And so when we're generous in one area, we find ourselves growing in other areas. If I'm stingy in one area, maybe I am generous. Maybe I just write my tithe every, every month or every week or however I do whenever I get my money. I write my check, no problem. But saying compliments to someone, showing love to someone, hmm, I maybe, if you earn it, maybe I will. Is that being generous? No. Right. That's not being generous. And we know people who aren't generous in those areas. They might be generous financially, and probably they're not, though. Most people who become stingy, you start being stingy in other areas. But you find when people start being generous with their money, truly generous with their money, they grow in generosity of other ways. It flows into different ways. And ge generosity can change all your perspective on this world. Because how you learn to manage your money, instead of having your money manage you, and how you learn to give, you find that you bless others. And as you bless others, you get blessed even more. You get it pressed down, shaken together, so it's really packed in there, overflowing, 
poured into you. When you're generous, that's how our great God works. Give and you shall receive. Because math in the kingdom of God doesn't work like you might think. Minus equals plus. That's how math in the kingdom of God works. This is my favorite math saying about God's kingdom. Minus equals plus. When you give, you receive. Minus equals plus. It doesn't work like that in any other way but in the kingdom of God. When you give, you receive. God, God works in all sorts of mysterious ways. It, like Now, I'm not saying that if you gave $10,000 to the church tomorrow, and we'll, or today even, we'd be happy to receive that. That tomorrow or next week you're going to get $10,000 back. That's not what I'm talking about. But you will receive. When I start out to give, sometimes I, um, I've determined to tithe, and I'm going to talk about that here in a minute. But when I give to the Lord, I always tell the Lord, I can only give to you what you give to me. That's what I say. Well, when we got ready, you know, when we found out we were moving before we found out anything else, I, I, and people said, well, are you worried and all this about your finances and all this? And I said, no, I can only give to God what God gives to me. If he wants me to give more, he's better give more to me. That's how I work with God. God and I know each other that well way. That, you know, and I, again, tithe. I give at least 10% of everything that comes into my life off the top. Because I know if I don't do it off the top, sheesh, it'll be painful later. <laughs> so just do it first. <laughs> and then I know at least I'm being obedient to him. I have my many vices, but I know I'm giving, uh, at least I'm being obedient. But giving is our corporate act. That's what we do with our offerings when we give to the local church. That's corporate. But also individually we can give because I give now more, much more in addition to my tied to the local church. Now, people, pastors of other pastors and other people said, do you give your 10% to your church that you're serving? Yes, I do. And they said, but is that where you worship? And I said, well, sometimes <laughs> as a pastor, it's hit or miss whether I actually get to worship, but you're my church. This is my church now. And I give to my church. And so I give 10% to the church I serve. Right off the top. Again, I have to do it off the top. Adam Hamilton, in our reference book, The Walk, talked about when he joined a local church. And he talked about, you know, he was younger, a young adult, and he's like 18, 19, and he, um, he was just freshly married, and he was going to school and working a part-time job, and he asked the pastor about giving to the church, how much he should give to the church. And the pastor said, well, when you worship, giving is part of your worship to God. Giving shows your faith. Giving shows that you know everything you have comes from God. That's what your giving shows. And he said, your giving reflects your faith. And you honor God, and you make it clear to God that you know everything comes from him when you give. And not only that, he said to him, but your gifts support the local church ministries. And that's the way your gifts work and my gifts work. You know, we would not be able to support the food pantry if we didn't give to the church. Because there'd be no place to collect it. There'd be no place to collect the stuff we send down Kentucky. But more importantly than that, we wouldn't be teaching children in our kids club, in our youth group, in our other activities. We wouldn't be teaching them about Jesus. Children would not be hearing about Jesus as much as they do in our community if we didn't give our offerings. That's just the way it is. It wouldn't happen. If this building wasn't here, think of all the things that would not happen. That would not happen. And you think some things would move. A lot of things just wouldn't happen. We wouldn't be signing people up for, the, for their COVID vaccines, and that's just one little thing. That's hardly anything. But we wouldn't. there's so many activities that happen because we're here. And not because we're in this building, but because we're in this community. And so giving supports those things. And that's an important thing to think about. It makes you feel good when you think about how much it goes out. Like, for example, not only do our gifts support our community, but our tithes and offerings, because we have such a very generous outreach committee that goes all over the place, like to Africa and India and China, all over the country. Now, I'll tell you, all over the world, I'm not going to China and India probably never in my life but if I do go, I'll go on a vacation, and I'm not probably going to witness to people about Jesus. 
but my tithe already is. Isn't that awesome? My tithe is already supporting people all over the place about Jesus, simply because I give to the local church, and especially as United Methodists, and my little bit of my tithe that's going out there multiplies with people all over the country, all over the world that are giving, and does a lot of good in Jesus' name. That's the power of giving. That's the power of multiplication. Minus and you receive. And tithing is when we give our first of our income. And you know what Jesus, he did, he did something more than anything else. I just told you what he did. What did he do more than anything else? Prayed. But what did he talk about when he talked more than anything else? Sex? No. I got, that got your attention. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was money. It's so hard to imagine. He talked about money even more than forgiveness. And that was his second big topic. Money. That's how powerful money is. Money either controls us or we control our money. So you want to know how you're doing in your life? Look at your accounts. It used to be you'd always say, look at your check register. People don't live that way anymore, so I just say, look at your accounts. Adam Hamilton says, look at your tax returns, which you're probably getting ready to do or doing right now. That tells you where your money went. What does it say about how you live your life? What does it say about your money? That's, what, that's a good judge. That's a good way for you to evaluate. How am I doing spiritually? Am I giving 10%? Hamilton had his tax account and said that if you give to charitable giving, like the local church, then you're more likely to pay off debt. You're a better loan risk if you're a good giver to charitable giving, which I thought was interesting. But it can be hard. It can be hard. Hamilton, when he started giving, he, he didn't have any money. Like I said, he was poor. And when I started to tithe, I was too. I just got out of college. I had a very low-paying job at a senior meal service program, which I loved, but it didn't pay anything. And I told my family, I told my, I don't even know why, but I told my brother I was going to tithe. And he just said, you can't tithe. You are too poor to tithe. That's what he said. He goes, you, there's no way you're going to make your payments of your car and your rental on your, your apartment and all. You, and you're, no, you cannot tithe. Of course, in our family, that was fighting words. And I was like, I'm going to tithe. <laughs> and I, it was hard. I had to say no to some invitations with my friends because I didn't have the extra money to go to the concert or go to the movies or go out to dinner. I had to say no. I ate a lot of ramen noodles and those uh, peanut butter sandwiches that first year. I did until I better got my life and got a little raise, of course. But I did it, and I felt so good. And, and now, looking back, it really made me think, you know, I can, I can even though I'm very, very blessed now, that I can, uh, I can do a lot of things because I learned how to tithe early in my life and manage my money is what really it taught me. But now I'm kind of struggling like this guy. Not to this extent. But a man came in the pastor's office and he was having a struggle because his monthly giving was going to be above $10,000 a month. So how much money was he making if he continued to tithe? Over a million dollars. He'd been very blessed. But he was in a smaller church like ours. I can't even imagine if somebody gave $10,000 a month to our church. We would, not, we would be giving away so much stuff when we did. be like awesome. We would have nothing to worry about. And uh, that's the power of tithing. Even if you had everybody on minimum wage and they were able to tithe, you'd be surprised how much money we'd have just to, we give a lot away, but we tithe, uh, the portion of our church budget gets tithed here, which I find amazing and awesome. But so the pa- he came in, he's talking to the pastor, and he goes, you know, pastor, I, I just don't know if I can do it. I've been tithing all this time, but that just seems like a lot of money for our little church. And that's what happens. The more people, people give a bigger amount, the less they make. But then when they reach a certain amount, it seems like two or $3,000. People are like, that's enough for that church. <laughs> it has nothing to do with tithing. It has no spiritual discipline. And so that's what this guy's thinking. That's too much. How are they going to use that? I don't know what they're going to do with that. I, you know, you get snippy with it. Instead of just saying, give it to God and forget it. And so the pastor said, well, let's pray about it. So the pastor started. They had a moment of quiet, and then the pastor started praying. He said, Lord, I'm so thankful that you've blessed my friend here. You have blessed him and helped his business to grow, and you have just multiplied his blessings, and 
And now he's really at this struggle right now, Lord, that what, how he can be faithful in giving. And so, Lord, I just ask that you make his finances match his heart. Well, and the pastor said, amen. The man was, broke out his checkbook and wrote the check. He didn't want his finances to match his heart. <laughs> he wanted his finances to match his what they were matching, right? Friends, don't let your heart determine how you give. Let your will be to be obedient to Christ. The more we give, the more we will receive. Make your choice to give God your best. Now, I don't like deli, and some people say, well, how, should we give net income? Should we give our, off our tax returns? Yeah, no, <laughs> in my mind. <laughs> Who knows how many exemptions you've taken? <laughs> how about your gross income? That's what I do. And, and again, my invitation to God is, if you want me to give it, you have to give it to me, and I'll be happy to give it. And sometimes I get with God, and I'm like, well, you think you're giving so much to me? I'm going to show you. I'm going to give this extraordinary for me amount to this charity or whatever, and I'm just going to do it. And that's on top of my tithe, and I do it. And then sure enough, it's about happened almost every time when I have that little snippy attitude. God says, mm-hmm, and he sends me some money. And I'm like, really? <laughs> you're funny, very funny. But we've all been blessed. And to live faithfully, we might have to manage our money. And I certainly can help talk to you about that. I've been there. And I can help you overcome those things. But I will guarantee you, if you want to have more in your life, give more. And you will. Because as we are giving to God, God will bless us. Because you can never outgive the Lord. God's desire for us is to be generous people. So I invite you to change, uh, to take on maybe five new ways to be generous with your palm. But give God your best, because God has given all of this to us. Amen? Amen. We have some prayer concerns we want to lift up before we conclude. Of course, continue to pray for our sweet Dee Hanner as she continues to have health problems. Richard Faust did really well with his eye surgery, and he on Monday, he said he felt the prayers surrounding him. So good job, church. He knew he was loved and surrounded. And he's doing really well with that lens in his eye. Paul Sieber has a diverticulitis and is going to have to have some more tests on that. He plays um, for the drums at our late service. So keep Paul uh, Siebert in your prayers. Uh, of course, Dave and Carol Siebert are really having struggles down in southern Illinois. So keep them in your prayers. And... Um, Marvin Madison uh, did go to the hospital, but is home, and he's waiting for some more testing, so please keep him in your prayers. We want to just pray for our sweet Tammy Pulver, who's really just struggling, and, and we just need the Lord to deliver her, and we're going to keep praying for that. Lita Leach also is really having struggles with her uh, hip and that tear around her hip from that cartilage and just just almost in, incapacitated at times, and, and so the two Kids in high school, uh, she just really needs our prayers for healing and encouragement. Kaylin's still plugging along, so we're thankful for that. And let's just keep all the folks battling cancer. Um, Kurt uh, Pernsky, Perninsky, I, you know me in pronunciations. I'm so sorry, Kurt. God knows who you are, and everyone else here knows who you are. And I will work on getting your name pronounced right, but we're going to just lift Kurt up for prayer. Powerful prayer healing. He's been diagnosed with rectal cancer. And so just we're going to surround him with a lot of prayer for healing too. All right. And I'm sure there's others. If there are, just be sure and let me know um, who I'm forgetting. But the Lord isn't. If you lift them up, the Lord hears you. So let's pray together. Gracious and loving God, as we come to you today in this fourth week of Lent, we ask that you do help us to take on the joy of giving, not only of our material possessions, of which we have been readily blessed, but help us also to take on the joy of giving our love, our listening ear, our encouragement, our praise to others. Help us to learn to be generous in knowing that as we give, so we receive. 
And Lord, we do ask that you bless in a powerful way with your healing all these that need it, especially those battling cancer. We pray for them to have victory this week. We pray for them to be encouraged and strengthened in body and in spirit. We just lift up Tammy and Kurt and others that are walking hard journeys. We know you're walking with them, but we pray for victory for them and their families. We just ask, O oh Lord, that your powerful spirit just rest upon them this day. And we pray for others with long-term health issues and challenges like Lita and Dee, and that you just give them all that they need, Mervyn and Carol and Dave, that you just rest your spirit upon them for folks facing tests like Paul and Mervyn, that you just guide them and, and give them peace in their hearts. And Lord, thank you for this beautiful day you've given us. We know a winter storm might be approaching again, but spring is coming as we hear the birds singing and we know that you cannot be stopped and your will will not be thwarted. Help us to live in that will this day. You invite each of us to take on a new journey. Help us to take on the journey of Easter, of victory, of love, hope, and graciousness, and to find out just how very generous you can be. We thank you, Lord, for all the ways you bless us. Because we are blessed so much, help us to go out and bless others. In Jesus' precious name we pray, and we continue praying as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's stand together and sing one of my favorite hymns, Freely, Freely. been born again in Jesus name and in Jesus name I come to you to share his love as he told me to he said free benediction. Go forth in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.
Go forth in the love and power of Jesus. Go forth in sure confidence that our great God, the creator of all that is, is with you and goes with you every step of the way. Share God with others. That is God's will for us, that we may indeed live blessed. Amen? Amen.